In a previous episode, we built a set reset latch or an SR flip flop. And we built it based on a design that we found in the IBM 604 customer engineering manual, which was a, essentially a multi vibrator design. And while this is a brilliant design and it's very compact, I, I discovered that it has a little bit of reliability issues at the extremely low voltages that we're running at, which is just 24 volts. And so, uh, we can also build that SR flip-flop out of dual NOR gates, and I've discovered that that's much, much more reliable. So that's what I want to explore today, but I don't want to just stop there, because while the SR flip-flop is fantastic, it has some limitations for moving forward into the future for different things that I want to build. And so I want to take that SR flip-flop and evolve it into essentially a gated latch, essentially make a very simple D flip flop. And so that's what I want to do today. I want to pull out some NOR gates and build a D flip flop on our breadboard and give it a shot. So let's hop over to the bench and get started. So this is our basic set reset latch using dual NOR gates here like this. And uh, if we imagine that our Q here, which is our output, this is an inverted version of that. So if we imagine that our Q here is zero, that means that uh, this NOR gate has a low output here. Uh, which means that this is low, and if this is low, then this has to be high because it's a NOR gate. And so that high signal comes up this way into here, which holds this output low. All right, and then if we put a high signal into the set line here, well, we have a high signal coming into this NOR gate, which pulls the output low. And if this output goes low, well, this output's also low. That means that this output goes high. And when that goes high, obviously our Q turns on, but also we come all the way down to here and we have a high signal going into this NOR gate to keep the output of this NOR gate low after we release our set signal here. So then when we do reset, obviously the opposite happens. And so it's a very cool, very elegant way to set up a set reset latch using just uh, two NOR gates. But to expand this further, I want to add an additional two NOR gates to it to create this setup here. So you can see there's actually three additional elements here. We've got two NOR gates and an inverter. And then we have two inputs. And so I've written them as D and C. And so in this case, D is gonna stand for data and C is going to stand for clock. And our clock goes through the inverter so that we have a high signal coming into uh, both of our NOR gates here. And if we have a high signal coming into both of our NOR gates, that means that the outputs of both of them are going to be low, which means that uh, the essentially set and reset pins going into our SR flip-flop over here are going to be low as well. Now, because this is high, whatever's on the data input here doesn't actually affect the output here. So we can have data constantly moving uh, on and off and whatever we want, but as long as we don't toggle the clock here, that doesn't affect anything. So what happens if we have a high signal on the data line here and we pulse the clock? Well, when we pulse the clock, it goes high, but the inverter takes it low. And when these two lines here go low, but this line stays high, we have essentially a low output here, uh, but that low output also travels down here. And that means that we have two low inputs coming into this NOR gate, which means that the output of this NOR gate goes high. And if we remember this input into our SR flip-flop here was the set input. And so when this output goes high, that essentially sets our latch here, which puts, puts our Q up to uh, a high output. And then this holds that state with the flip-flop output being high until we pulse the clock again. So if we have a low input on D here and we pulse the clock, now we have a low input coming into here and another low input coming into here, which means the output of this NOR gate goes high. And when that output goes high, we have a high signal that comes down to here and high and low, well, it's gonna pull this uh, output low, but our high signal is coming into here. So we have a low signal into our set and we have a high signal into our reset. And that resets it, which pulls our Q output here down to a low signal. And so this is a really simple way of creating essentially a D flip-flop using four NOR gates and an inverter. So let's take a look at how we're gonna build this with vacuum tubes. 
All right, and so here's the schematic of how I'm planning on trying to build this on the breadboard. And I'm going to do it with four 6AU6 pentodes. So you can see the four pentodes right here in the center of, of these four segments here. And each pentode is going to be set up as a NOR gate because we had four NOR gates. And so that just means that the, uh, the suppressor grid is going to be tied to the cathode. The screen grid is going to be tied high with a 100 ohm resistor. And then our control grid is going to go through a 4.7 thousand ohm resistor and then a 22,000 ohm resistor to our two inputs through diodes and a 33,000 ohm resistor to negative 12. And this fundamental setup is the exact same for all four tubes. And so the only things that change is how we connect these diodes up to each other. And so you can see these are our two inputs up here. We have our data and our clock signal. And then we have our inverted output here and our output here. Now, I just wrote the clock signal as a C with a line over it to say that it's inverted. Um, and I'm not actually going to use a whole nother tube to make an inverter. I'm just going to uh, set up the button so that it has a uh, resistor coming from 24 volts into this. And then when I push the button, it pulls that uh, to ground. That's a really easy way to make kind of an inverted input with just a push button. Uh, but I, I didn't have space to draw it on here. So we'll see it on the breadboard when I pull it out. But other than that, it's a fairly simple layout. It's just a matter of uh, running the, you know, the clock signal to where it needs to go, the data signal where it needs to go, and then the outputs to where they're supposed to go. And so the way this is set up is that these two uh, NOR gates on the end are essentially our set reset latch. And then uh, these two NOR gates here are the two that set up the gated D latch property of it. So uh, this seems pretty simple, despite how crazy it looks in the schematic here, but I think we can stuff this all onto a single breadboard. So let's pull the breadboard out and give it a shot. All right, well, here's our breadboard and you can see that I've already put the jumpers for the four individual tubes in place here. And uh, because we're using four equal tubes and we're running the whole thing on 24 volts, I want to run the heaters in series. And so I'm just going to go ahead and hook the jumpers up for that right quick. All right, and since all four tubes are essentially set up as inverting amplifiers with two diodes to make them NOR gates, I just want to go ahead and set up each one of these as that. So we'll just get those set up real quick like this. Okay, and just a brief explanation of what we did there is that we, we connected the uh, suppressor grid to the cathode, and that's connected to this orange wire here, which goes to ground through this little gray jumper. We have a 10,000 ohm resistor coming into the plate, a 100 ohm resistor going into the screen grid, and then I use a little brown jumper to take the output off of that plate over to this side where it's a little easier to use. For the control grid, we have a 4.7 thousand ohm resistor, and then on the other side of that 4.7 thousand ohm resistor, we have a 22 thousand ohm resistor and a 33,000 ohm resistor. And the 33,000 ohm resistor goes to negative 12, and the 22,000 ohm resistor goes to these two diodes, which are uh, sharing one side and then split apart on the other side. So we have our two inputs that go into this single 22,000 ohm resistor. And well, that's the uh, exact same for all of these. So next I want to get the input sorted out and with the input I'm going to do the clock as a push button. So we'll just go ahead and push that little push button in right here. Uh, and then one side of that push button needs to have a resistor connected to 24 volts. So we're going to do that with just a, a little 10,000 ohm resistor here. And then the other side of that push button needs to go to ground. And then we'll make this side with the resistor as our output off of that. So I just need a little jumper to set that up. So I'll actually pull the push button out again right quick and set that up just like that. And we'll put that right back in. All right, so this is actually going to be our inverted clock. So normally we have 24 volts coming through this 10,000 ohm resistor through this uh, gray jumper here into the input of our first NOR gate here. And then when I push the button, this uh, essentially shorts this input to ground. And then of course the 10,000 ohm resistor is just going straight to ground as well. But that essentially pulls the input into this low. Now, if we remember the inverted clock had an input into the first NOR gate as well as the second NOR gate. So we need a jumper to move that input over to the second NOR gate as well. So we'll just use this little jumper right here to do that. 
All right, and so the next input that we need to set up is our data input. And the data actually only goes into this first NOR gate, which is just this extra uh, little diode right here. So we can do that with a toggle switch pretty easily. If I take this uh, little toggle switch that just pops into here, one, the far right pin of that toggle switch is on the same rail as this diode. So uh, if we put 24 volts into the center pin of that toggle switch, then when the toggle switch is to the left, that 24 volts is going through the center pin to the left pin, which is connected up to nothing. But if I push the toggle switch to the right, that 24 volts is going through the center pin to the right pin, which is going into this far left diode right here. And that'll be our data input. So that would be a uh, data one, and that would be a data zero. So there we go, we have our two inputs set up. And that's actually all of this first NOR gate setup, with the exception that the output from this NOR gate goes into two directions. One of those directions is into the input of this second NOR gate, uh, as well as all the way over to an input for this third NOR gate. So we need some, uh, some jumpers for that. The second NOR gate is going to be really easy uh, because it just hops from this little brown one over to that little diode right there. And I have a little blue jumper here that, that'll do that really easily. So that works out really well. Now to get it from here all the way over to this input, we need a longer jumper for that. And so I've got this, uh, this orange jumper that I've already bent up for that case. And so we'll go ahead and uh, just run that over like that. All right, and so that's our first NOR gate completely and totally set up. And uh, actually that's both of the inputs into our second NOR gate set up as well. The only thing that we need to do for it now is we need to take the output out of the second NOR gate and get it to where it's uh, supposed to be as well. And, and if we remember our logic diagram, the output from the second NOR gate goes all the way over to the fourth NOR gate as an input. So again, we need a quite long jumper for that, but I've got one uh, bent up for that that'll move it right on over to there. All right, so that gets that set up. All right, and so that is our gated portion of it all set up. So let's go ahead and set up the uh, SR flip-flop portion of it. And the, we already have one input into this third uh, NOR gate here. And so the, the other input actually comes from the output of the opposing NOR gate over here. So we need a quite long jumper to go from, from that output all the way over to the input on this one. Uh, but this jumper is pre-bent by yours truly and seems to fit pretty well. And then this third NOR gate is, well, it's got two inputs now, and so it just needs to figure out where its output goes. And its output uh, goes through an output LED so we can see the, uh, the status of the flip-flop, but it also goes as an input into this fourth and final NOR gate. So we'll just use a little jumper for that. Well, that's everything except for our LEDs all set up. So let's go ahead and get our LEDs set up. So we'll go ahead and just run a uh, 22,000 ohm resistor for this one here, as well as off of the output of this one over here. And then we'll hook our LEDs up. So this one goes uh, to that pin there, and this one goes to this pin here. And then to make sure that our LEDs go properly off when we have a logic low signal, we're going to run a, a little 10,000 ohm resistor as a voltage divider parallel to each LED there. Well, I think that's everything. That went together really, really easily. It looks pretty complicated on the board, but uh, most of this uh, resistor diode stuff is just the exact same for all four tubes, which makes it really easy to set up. So speaking of those tubes, let's, let's go ahead and plug all four of those in. All right, now all we're missing is uh, 24 volts and negative 12 volts. So we'll just go ahead and uh, run our jumpers for that right quick. Now, I believe that everything is hooked up correctly. So uh, this LED is gonna be our regular output and this LED over here is gonna be our inverted output. I'm not sure if you'll be able to see that. This tube may be blocking it, but this is gonna be our important output here anyway. So let's go ahead and flip the switch and see what happens. Okay, both LEDs turned on, but as the tubes warm up, we should see one of those LEDs fade out and go off. All right, all right, all right. That's that's good. That's good. This one, this uh, this inverted output over here faded out and went off. So that's fantastic. So right now we've got a uh, logic one stored in our D flip flop here. So if I put my data at zero, 
you know, if I, if I move this data back and forth, nothing happens. But if I put the data at zero and I toggle the clock, we should see this LED go off and this LED over here turn on. So we should see our output go to zero. So let's do that. Let's push the clock button here. Yes. Whew. All right. Now let's see if we can store a one back in this. Because right now we've got a, a zero stored here and we've got our inverted output on. So we'll put our data back on. Uh, nothing changed, that's good. So if I move this switch back and forth, nothing changes. So our data is now set to one. If I toggle the clock, we should see this LED come back on. Yes, yes. <laughs> that's awesome. That, that works, it works. Look at that. That's super cool. Oh man. Okay, all right, so we've built a functioning D flip-flop. This is epic because there's a lot of stuff that we can do with this. There's a lot of directions that we can take this and build some really neat stuff. Uh, but man, that's just, I'm so, that's so cool how it works. Well, that was a huge amount of fun to build today. I'm actually uh, surprised with how easy it was to build on the breadboard here. Pretty much every tube was set up exactly the same, and the only kind of special things that we needed to do was to bend up these long jumpers to connect all the outputs to the appropriate inputs. Uh, but the the result is is epic. The result is really, really cool. So. I'm super stoked about this. There's a lot of really interesting ways we can go with this in the future. But uh, for now, I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna keep playing with uh, my really simple blinking light setup here. So uh, thank you guys for watching and well, we'll see y'all in the next episode.